This time on Captain Castle's Laboratory, we're going to be working on the Limax ride, The Shooting Star. Or, ride, The Shooting Star, as it says here. Uh, this was given to me to repair. Said that it doesn't function. No lights, no sound, no animation. So, let's find out. I just plugged it in. Ooh, that sounds bad. Okay, I'm getting a lot of vibration up here in the hub when I put my hand on it. This is where the motor is housed. Um, so I have a funny feeling it's got a, a really bad motor that's grounding out or shorting out just enough to kill all the other functions, such as the lights and the sound. So, but uh, let's uh, see about taking this thing apart, getting into it, all the nitty gritty, and uh, see what we can do about fixing this and making it work. So, we're going to take this thing apart, like I was saying. And here's the funny thing about this is um, I just recently helped somebody over the internet who's in Canada. Uh, his name is Robert. And by him sending me pictures, we were able to figure out together how to open this thing to get to this motor. So, as you can see, there's no screws except here in the arm. There's nothing in the back. You can see there's nothing in the front. Yeah, this one was a, a little trick. And, of course, just like all of them, there's screws or attachments in the bottom under the rubber mat. But we need to uh, open this. And I'll show you how to open this guy up and fix it. It shouldn't have this much travel. And we'll see if that's the only problem with this. There could be other problems with it. It's very possible. But I'll give you some close-ups of this guy. If you look, I'll try and hold this as best as I can. You can see this plastic is already starting to separate all the way around. And there is a couple of broken flags. There's one here and there's one here. They're in the box. The person that gave it to me said the flags are broken. They're in the box. The two in the front are still attached. So we're good there. Um, but if you look, this separation, you can also see there's a seam right here. So we know this whole assembly comes apart. And this arm has one screw here. And we got several screws down here. We got two there. And I believe there's a couple, yeah, to hold the figurines on these guys. So... So, inside here, it's hard to tell, but right here in the center, there's got to be something that holds it together. And from working back and forth with uh, Robert, we are able to determine that we need to pop out this center, and there's a screw behind it. Which is kind of typical that there's a screw hidden in all of these that have a central axle, whether they're a Ferris wheel or a this style ride swinging arms, even the carousels, right in the center on the top, there's a shaft with a nut. There's got to be something in the center to make the axle or the hub assembly. So instead of tearing the bottom off, I'm going to start here and see if I can access this screw. Because if we can just remove this assembly to get to this motor without going in through the bottom, that'd be great. And if we can get to this motor, then we can maybe fix it. If not, I'll take the bottom apart. But I'm going to see if I can do a shortcut instead of disassembling it into a thousand pieces, if we can reduce the amount of time and waste of energy and just start at the top and work our way down versus most of the time where we start at the bottom and work our way up. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, grab the heat pen. And my prying screwdriver, which is around here somewhere.
Let's see if that got warm enough. can um, get it apart. normal prying screwdriver has gone missing so I'm using a surrogate. I use a uh, hefty amount of glue. See it's starting to separate, but I don't want to get it so hot it melts the plastic. Uh, watch your temperature when you do something like this. You don't want to do any uh, extra damage to your piece. Always keep your heat moving. Keep it in one spot too long, you risk melting everything. She is coming. You got one side to lift. Now, basically, I'm just uh, heating it and putting pressure along the edge to try and get it to separate. here. I need to see. Another reason I'm doing this a little more careful and not doing it as rapid is um, this is an actual light. So we're ungluing the housing that holds the light and I'm trying not to damage the light itself. I can see the LED clusters through the lens.
got my prying screwdriver, the one I normally use. <laughs> Looking down and I saw it. I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to use the angle to try and reach inside and grab it like that. Now I'm going to use a slightly bigger screwdriver because i got a space now. Let's see if I can get this cork to pop out. Almost out. It's out. So, I'll have to use a heat gun to flatten the edge out, and I'll show you that in just a second. Let me put this guy away. So I don't burn myself on it. Alright, so here she be. So oh, there's the LED, and there's the screw, and you can see where when I was pulling it up it warped because uh, I didn't have it hot enough. So I'm going to heat the lens when we're done and flatten this back out. You don't want it so hot you distort it, but then again you don't want it not hot enough that it doesn't come out. It's kind of a, a sticky trade of area. Uh, you have limited on your temperature range. Too high or too low, you're gonna you're gonna screw it up. But a little damage that's repairable is okay because it's better than having a non-functioning unit. All right, so this is the back of the assembly. See, this is a lot easier than taking all the screws out. And without Robert and uh, sending me all the pictures and we working it out, we're working it out together. This would have been a much more difficult process. This is a rotor assembly. Uh, similar to what you see on the uh, carousels. Uh, inner and outer track, one's positive, one's negative. It makes all these lights light up right in here. And uh, the contacts, uh, set this out of the way so it doesn't get more damaged or broken. The contacts are right here. You can see where they're at. There are four little fingers. And if you look, there's an itty bitty screw right here. So, Take this screw out. And get my magnetic ring. There we go. Gonna use a spudger. And we're going to pop this stuff down. Bear with me for a second. Okay, sorry for that brief uh, delay. I had a call come in. Uh, somebody I know has just got to the hospital after getting uh, injured. So but we're back. <clears throat> um, heating up my uh, heat pen. We're turning it back on. Should turn off in a second. But uh, this piece flexes out. But it won't come out because down inside are four standoffs with four screws. Behind these four stars are going to be screw heads. So we need to heat them up and pop them off. Or possibly heat them up and pop them off. Depending on the type of glue, they might pop off easy. So I'm just going to pry on one just for a second and see if it separates. Use a spudger.
if you can see that, it just pops into its hole. So I'm glad I didn't use the heat. At least that one. Yep, they're just literally popped in. So you just need something small enough to get behind them. Now this one just popped out and I actually pushed it back in. That wasn't uh, terribly smart. So you need something really thin to get underneath the edge. So a small, small electronic screwdriver, spudger. I think this one's actually been glued in. There's actually some glue right here. So I might have to heat this one. And this one was sticking up. There we go. I got it out. Let's see if I can get this one to, there we go, separate. Yeah, that one actually had glue on it. I think they both did, but this one had a lot. You can see it right there. So down inside, we got some Phillips screws. Now, of course, if this isn't the problem, we'll end up taking the bottom off. But I have a funny feeling, as in most animated houses, when the motor goes bad, you lose, well, you lose everything. It's just part of the, the way it works with electricity. That one's not out all the way. There we go. So... the interior as you can see you got the hot wire which connects to these two the ground wire which connects to these two right there on the back you have <clears throat> huh this is a switch it is a motion switch it's probably going to be detecting the speed at which this thing is moving and slow it down or stop it so it doesn't go out of control Here's the motor. It's this guy right here. Here's the motor right there. So I unplugged the motor. So now we're going to plug this thing back in and see if it, well, <clears throat> see if it uh, does anything. The bottom should at least make some noise. All the lights were in the top part, which are currently disconnected because they're over there. So let's see if uh, it is just a motor. Go from there. Wow. Yeah, we have noise. So now let's do this. I'm going to do my best to hold this onto these tracks. Let's see if I get this alignment. off, make it a little easier to see. See all the lights. So this is a bad motor. Center. So, and this is one that resets. Now here's the problem. There's no motor to reset this. The motor's unplugged. So even though the switch is off, it's going to continue to try and run because <clears throat> this is one of the ones you cannot unplug for risk of damage to the unit, because it has to reset this into the bottom position. So this is at the bottom, the most weight. So it's never going to reset because there's no motor. So let's just kill the power. And slide this hub back out. There we go. And get 
it out of the way. <laughs> and then uh, let's take this thing apart so we can get to the motor and find out exactly uh, what we need. It looks like a standard hobby motor, like normal. So, let's turn the light back on. So, so I'm going to unplug this front part so I can get it out of the way. Apparently, I can't get it completely out of the way. Uh, this is the alignment which determines its position of that center hub. It's cammed. I'm going to show you the inside again so you can see what I'm going to be doing once I start unscrewing. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, we have one screw up here which holds this in. I believe there's probably another screw hiding somewhere underneath this gearbox. Oh, no, apparently not. So I'm going to take that one screw out so we can get a closer look at this mechanism. have two screws in here because of the amount of centrifugal weight. There is supposed to be two screws in here. It's missing a screw. So I'll see if I can fix that by replacing the screw. So here is your small gearbox. Here's your belt. I'm going to do the same thing I always do. I'm going to rotate this pulley and examine the gears. This has that standard 10 tooth, which is notorious for breaking. We already know it's not a broken gear that's causing the major issues. But still, it's always good to check them. They're really good at breaking. Just have to spin it a lot because, of course, the last gear spins really slow. Yeah. Gears look okay. There's three screws in the top. We're going to have to loosen or remove the screws because this gear right here is sitting directly on top of the motor. There is probably the thickness of a piece of construction paper that separates this motor from this gear. Once we unscrew these two screws, there's not going to be enough room to pull this out without bending or cracking this other gear. So <clears throat> we're going to have to remove those screws. First thing I'm going to do is take the belt off, which has been sitting in this position for a while. As you can see, the teardrop, the small pulley, and this is the big pulley. So it has been down for a while. And what we're going to do is make it back up, get it working. Taking two of them out for the moment. I want to unscrew the two motor screws so I can <clears throat> have the motor prepped to fall out. Yeah. yeah, see. Now with me removing this screw and this screw, it lifts enough that I can possibly get this motor to come out without disassembling the entire transmission. So I loosen the one in the corner and remove the other two. So I'm going to slide this gear uh, pulley off. I'm not using this as a cutter, I'm just using it as a pry tool because it's tapered. So I got the pulley off. I'm going to cut the wire. I'm going to grab my new motor. And if you've seen my most recent video with uh, the carousel, you'll know that we're going to uh, solder and heat shrink the wires together. So I'm 
going to get a piece of heat shrink. And it's black this time. I think the last time was yellow. And I'm going to cut it in half. Slide it onto the wires. And I'm going to strip some off. You'll also know from my previous videos, I like to have a little extra wire. Uh, that way, in case you screw up, you didn't cut it short to begin with. So if you did this and broke it with this extra long, you can cut it back and do it again. You can also just wrap the wire inside here or uh, wrap it around the pins where it screws in. You can tape it, hot glue it. But sometimes when you buy these motors, instead of them having a, what is this, a five and a half inch long pigtail, sometimes they only come with like a two inch pigtail. And if you cut this wire too short, you might have to extend it which is why I usually cut them close to the motor, just so I have extra. Because if you use your stuff all the time, you will eventually have failures. Uh, and it doesn't mean that the part you bought's a failure, it just means that things fail, things break, it happens. Nothing we can do about it. Now, if you don't have a soldering gun, but you have heat shrink, you can always twist the wires together. I don't recommend this as much because solder is a great bond. But you can take the two wires, put them side by side, twist them. Like so, solder nice and twisted, and then you can fold it over. So it's flat against the wire going away from the heat shrink, and you can slide the heat shrink over and heat it, and it will hold that wire together right there. But I prefer soldering it because solder gives you a better joint so it's less likely to arc or corrode. And also if the heat shrink fails, the wires won't come off. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of solder on these guys to bond them. This is what I mean. The negative wire came undone when I was doing the positive. So I'll twist it again. Turn off the soldering iron. Slide the heat shrink over, and we're going to heat it up. Instead of turning on the air gun and getting it all loud in here, just quickly use a lighter. And just do it long enough that it melts the heat shrink and not damages anything else. Now, reassemble. Now this still has pretty decent lubrication, but if your lubrication was lacking, this would be the time to add a little. Uh, a lithium or silicone grease works good. Small amounts, you don't need a lot. Plus you don't want it getting into the motor. You get grease in the motor, that's usually what kills them. Gearbox back together. It'll hold the motor in, and then we can line up the screw holes for the motor. Right there. Careful with these screws. I say it every time. They're a pain to replace if you lose them.
Sometimes when you buy them online, if they come with a bracket, they'll have the little screws. Not always, so be mindful. Uh, don't over torque them. We just press the pulley back on. So just a press fit. When you press it on, try and make sure that you line the two pulleys in height up. I push it a hair too far. So I'm just gonna pry it up a little bit to give me the straightest alignment. And then put that back on. Spins nice. Plug it back into the circuit board. And let's make sure it actually spins under its own power. So I turned it back off. Of course, it's not going to stop until it detects that it's back to normal. That's actually a magnetic reed switch in there. But you can see if I just touch right here, you can see the whole wheel turns green. So it's still spinning. So we're going to plug it again. And now we're going to reassemble. So. Try and find a little hobby screw here to well, uh, replace the one that's missing in just a second. Let me get this guy in first. I'm gonna let uh, gravity assist me so instead of trying to hold the gearbox in place. Gravity help. And, and that screw is no good. Right now, is looking around. I usually have some small screws lying around on the bench. That's way too small. Small screw, but it's non magnetic, so I'm gonna have to hold it with my fingers. Done. There we go. So that's back in. I'm talking about all this extra here. You can hot glue it in or you can actually wrap it around the screw stand pipes. You use hot glue, rubber contact cement, uh, tape. You use a whole bunch of things to help hold this down inside, like so. As you can see it's no longer a big mess. Let's plug in this one. Because they don't have it tied off because there's nothing moving right there. And it is nice if you notice this right here is a bearing. It's a sealed bearing. 
It helps with the spinning motion and the stress on the shaft. That's a nice touch. A lot of times you just see a bushing, and bushings wear out faster than bearings. So that's back together. Let's uh, get some screws in this thing now. And we put the stars back on. If they're a little loose, or you think you're afraid they're going to pop out, um, you can put a dab of glue on them. I wouldn't recommend anything like super glue, like they had on these. Um, I'd recommend a hot glue or a rubber contact cement, something that allows you to access the thing when you need to fix it in the future, uh, or let me rephrase that: if you need to fix it again in the future. Yeah, because that's pretty loose. That's not going to stay. Let's try this one. Yeah, they're all super loose, so I'm going to have to put a dab of glue on each one. Before I do that, though, let's, uh, let's make sure this thing actually functions under its own power. Threads on that little guy. Nope. So there's something most likely wrong with the circuitry then now. Yeah, this motor is not good. Uh, it's drawing. It's drawing amperage. It's drawing. It's about three quarters of an amp, and it's not spinning. So this motor is bad, and it's a 300 CA motor. So the, I'm wondering if the motor damaged the circuitry. That's why I didn't want to put everything completely back together, just in case. So. so if yours does have a bad motor, at least you know a faster way to get to it. Spinning. It's got to be that magnetic switch. I'll show you. Now, if you can see that cam, she's moving right along. Those gears are moving freely. 
look in there, you should be able to see the teeth moving. The magnetic switch is working. All right, I'm gonna push it on all the way again and try it again. All right. So with this fully engaged, touching these lights, it's not working. So it had a bad motor, which has now been resolved. Now we need to find out why we're not getting any juice when this touches. And there's the magnet right there, just in case you're wondering how that magnetic reed switch works. That's the neodymium magnet right there. So what I'm going to do is just test continuity. Continuity. definitely have a small issue. Now we just have to troubleshoot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off two of these contacts, tape off the two hots, and I'm going to see if it works. We know the two hots were on the top that's going to do is it's going to prevent contact. So the problem is getting power to these lights. We know the lights work without the motor. See how much power these lights are drawing. Oh, they're drawing a lot of power. And they're not turning on. So this inner track is negative, which we know from that. And this outer track is positive. I'm doing two volts, and at two volts it's pulling almost one amp. That's a lot of power for LEDs. I'm gonna bump it up to three volts. And the meter saying that it's overdrawing. So there's a problem with these LEDs as well. So let's uh, let's open this thing up. It's a couple of screws. There, 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 there. Let's open this up and see if uh, I don't see any damage to the LED here when I took it out, and we know it lit up. 
when it was not under a load. So this thing maybe had multiple issues, which because this shares the same part as the motor, there's a good chance that um, this was going out and drawing too much power through that distribution block and it actually damaged the motor. That motor is bad. It was drawing almost a uh, amp by itself without turning. So, And there's our big circuit boards. And this circuit board is plastic staked on, which is just a transfer board. Transfers the power from uh, the rotor right there. Let's see what we got in here. Got any damaged wires? see where wires were rubbing the center section but there's no apparent damage at least nothing I can see so let's uh, put this thing at two and a half volts and give it power directly at its contact Nothing, nothing lighting up. There we go. Now, did this rotor get damaged? lights right now so these two wires right here which come from up there is where my problem is at slide the center light out so you can see that if I hook it up right to the board you see the little orange light but if I hook it up to the rotor assembly hot me out it says right now it's pulling over two amps so there's a short in this ring and I'm trying to see where because there's only two wires soldered to it I hate to have to break the ring off. And that's not touching anything. How about that. The 
two wires are soldered inside of this hole. And what I'm doing is I'm moving them around to make sure they're not touching anything. Uh, that can cause a problem. And let's see if that did anything. Yeah. No, still overpowered. Alright. I'm going to desolder these two wires from this circuit board so I can focus my attention on this without damaging anything. I don't want to stick my soldering iron in the holes and risk melting this plastic. So I'm going to take it off of here first. And we're going to try and figure out what exactly is going on here. was supposed to be nice and easy, just a motor. I'm just going to wet the tip of the soldering iron so it's not dry. And then uh, try and heat up the solder joint. Nope, you're going to have to put solder on the solder joint to get it to break free. And then this guy right here. So let you come apart. No. A lot of times with old solder, you have to put fresh solder on top of it to get it to separate, which is what I'm having to do here. It does not want to separate. I'm going to solder the original wire back on. The two reds were soldered together, and the two blacks were soldered but on opposite ends. So I'm going to set this aside. Now if the two wire is unhooked, if I apply power, there's no load, the meter should show zero, or no voltage going through it. If it beeps, it means it's a dead short. There's no continuity. So I'm wondering if it now is the solder joint. So it is the solder joint. So this set of wires does this bottom car. I'm just going to separate it for a second and see if it lights up independently. If it does, then we're going to work our way to the center lights. If it doesn't, then uh, we know what the short is. And yes, LEDs do short out. And when they do, it's uh, sometimes it's a pain to find it. I'm only getting the arc. These aren't lighting up. This, this LED strip could be the short right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the rest of it. I'm going to test the arm itself. It's just really hard because it's just a solder ball I'm connecting to. And all the lights are working. So my process of elimination, my issue, is in the car. Technically, you could have done all the checks with a multimeter, 
but it may not detect it since it didn't detect a short originally when I tested it on the unit itself. So this almost relatively quick repair is now turning into a slightly longer repair. This is why I usually pause when I'm doing them is because of stuff like this. There we go. There's a little bit more uh, stuff than I expected to find in here. So we have four contacts, two grounds, two hots, or two negatives, two hots, that when the car rotates, it's basically acting as another rotor. What is it swiping? It's swiping on these solder contacts right here. And these solder contacts go to this light strip, which is also attached to a a small chip with a diode and a capacitor. It's probably the flash sequence for that bottom set, which technically we're working earlier. But I think they were probably on their way and it was just a movement that caused them to fail. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get them to light up. You know what? I'll just hook it up here and up here that way I don't have to fight with it and the strip still isn't lighting up so now we're going to pull out the meter set it on DC I'm going to set it so I can see it as well I don't know if you can read it but I need to see the numbers Right now it's just picking up ambient voltage in the air. I need to get my uh, magnifiers on so I can make sure I don't touch the wrong stuff. I'm getting 2.585 volts. I have it set for 2.5, so tolerance is fine. That are going to these lights down here. Now I'm going to check these solder pads and see what I get on these solder pads. These are the lights themselves. So I'm getting no voltage. I'm getting voltage into the chip, but no voltage out of the chip. Now I'm getting no voltage because the wire broke. So so I still got lights on the top and no lights on the bottom. Might have lost this sequencing chip. Actually, I lost the uh, small component too. So, unfortunately, I can't read it. It's so small. So, I'm using a magnifying glass. Still can't read it. Uh, the chip just says A8. It's probably just some generic chip, timing chip for the flashes. And what I'm sure it does is every other light is soldered separately. So there's three wires. One is a common wire and the other two are switching. So it's probably every other light. So it looks like it's moving. But I uh, uh, can't. There's no power going to those pads. So I'm wondering if the chip has gone bad or one of the small, and I mean small, components on this board have failed. I 
I could tell if that was a capacitor or a resistor. Check capacitance on these capacitors that I can see. Capacitor. Twelve nanofarad. And what is this rated for? Hundred micros. That's, that's fine. All right, is this a capacitor? Now we're gonna check the diode. Four, six, four. So the diode's working. Doing right now is just checking the voltage for the LEDs. So it's over one volt. thinking this little board is bad right here. This is the part that's always the hardest when I'm working on these, like I was saying, is trying to find these electrical issues when they pop up. I have my uh, meter set to a really low voltage just to see if I can get a glow on these guys on the other side. I'm getting a glow. So the center white wire is negative, the gray wire is positive, and the yellow wire is what's shorted out. This guy right here. Uh, I'll show you. I'm going to dim the lights. You should be able to see the glow right here. I'm going to go turn off some lights. Enough light that I can still see what I'm doing. So if I put the negative on the white wire and the positive right here, you see the hopefully you can see the glow. see that or not. I hope you can. But if I switched it to the other side, the yellow wire, I'm getting nothing. I 
wish I could, I can't tell if you guys can see it or not because I can't see the camera while I'm doing this. So I'm going to try and... So every other light's coming on and every other light is in between isn't. So I have a bad leg on this strip. on the light. <sighs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this circuit board off. It's heat staked on, so I'm going to melt the heat stake with the soldering iron. I don't like doing this, but it's going to be the easiest way because of how the stakes are positioned. Um, usually I try to melt them with the heat uh, air gun if I can, but there's not a lot of room. Slightly bigger pry tool. I don't like doing that because it can ruin the soldering tip. Uh, this little circuit board was assembled in 2014, uh, June 10th of 2014 to be exact. So now with it out, I can get a better show you, better look as well, and what's going on uh, inside. And maybe we can try and diagnose it if it's a bad chip or if it's a bad LED string. I'm thinking it's a bad LED string. Oops, it touched each other. See, we got one, two blanks, one, two blanks, one, two blanks, one. If I move this over and touch here, I got no light. Now I got three lights. do this without touching them again. So, there Alright, so I see what it's doing now. Uh, each one of these can be negative or positive, and then it changes which lights. But the one that's only got three, I believe, is supposed to have four. Let's double check that one again real fast. each other. There we go. So I think we got a bad chip since all the lights are technically working. Let me turn this back on real quick.
<sighs> so that light's not working and this light's not working that is the reason why I believe it's shorting out is we have some bad LEDs on this strip we have two and it's it's not drawing a whole bunch of power but I do have it slightly overpowered I'm running it at five volts because at four and a half volts we got a couple of dim guys you may not look dim on the camera but like that one's really dim and that one's dim so uh, I believe we're having a uh, the tape is starting to fail the LED tape and that's not easily found or replaced you can find LED tape in different sizes and styles but to find this exact one that has three wire that reverses polarity or allows polarity to be reversed is going to be slightly difficult nothing on the back of the circuit board. Everything is soldered to the front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just check to make sure we don't have like a frayed wire that's touching something or you know, something obvious that's causing a malfunction. She looks decent. Yeah, there's another rotor behind this. These are the rotor feet to match those feet there. Um, I'm going to heat my soldering iron back up. I'm going to re-solder this back on. And then I'm going to plug it in, see if it works. If it doesn't work, or I'm not going to plug it in, I'm going to send power to it. Uh, then I might take this rotor assembly apart. So I'm wondering, with those two lights completely burned out now, if it will actually at least run on the remainder lights. Power supply is on, and hot, and not. And we're going to kill the lights again so you can see. So we still have the two that are burned out, right there and right there. But it's working without shorting out the meter and it shows very little power consumption. So, and that's at four and a half volts. So I'm going to now send power through the main lugs and see if we still get good lights or if it shorts out. I should be able to turn this with the board unstaked so you can see that. And here's the single light right here, which you should see that. You won't see the ones underneath, most likely. But we're going to uh, give it a whirl right there. And so, uh, yeah, I guess I need to. Uh, everything's working at the moment it's drawing 400 milliamps at 4.6 volts which is within tolerance uh, for the AC adapter let's turn this off and get it out of the way and the lights coming back
not going to be able to heat stake this back on because I think the stakes broke too much. I'm going to try. If not, that's what they make glue for. I just think I just got to, yeah, there's not enough of the pin sticking up for me to restake. Oh, wait, there might be. No, there is, surprisingly. Uh, what you do is with the piece is sticking up, you put the soldering iron in and it starts to flare out and then you tip it at an angle and it squishes it across and redoes the stake. Uh, problem with heat staking is, is uh, usually once you unstake something, it doesn't always go back together. You have to change it to something such as glue or tape, preferably glue. This is the counterweight that goes up here, just in case you were wondering. Plastic stakes. And now we're going to try the rotor, get that soldered back on. Still have a problem. Still picking up a short in this there's a rotor. I don't know why. This rotor is heat staked on in four spots. It's the problem with heat stakes is again, if I melt these out to pop this rotor assembly out, it's not going to go back in. That's going to have to be glued. But got to do what we got to do. Stinks real bad. So, just use a screwdriver to pry it up a little bit. There's lots of component stuff that can go on the back, but I do not see a short.
I don't see any gouges in the green material that connects any of the copper together. Well, maybe right there where they had a little bit of glue. And actually it might be it because now it's working. So I'm going to clamp to the negative. No. Nope. All right. This is a weird one, but I think I figured it out. There's a little damage to the circuit board right here from where it was attached. And I'm thinking the glue is slightly conductive. Shouldn't be. But I believe she's going to work now. I know uh, Gorilla Glue isn't conductive, so I'll use that to put it back on. Because we got all the lights. off with my fingernail the part that was touching these studs are not anywhere close enough in size for me to restate them so I'm not going to try it's not uh, all I risk doing is melting the, the little circuit board This is a little hefty chunk of metal. Make sure when you do, if you have to take this apart to make sure one, your gear is lined up. Uh, at the bottom, and two, and when you put the wires back in, they're not sitting over these two screw holes. And, and the two holes in the centrifugal weight actually go in this side. There's two little bosses for those two holes. One hole's bigger than the other, so make sure you put them on the right way. Unlike me, it has it backwards. So, so make sure all your wires are tucked and none of them get pinched. And let's rotate that. So yeah, this uh, this turned to be out a little bit more difficult and a little bit longer than I expected of a video. Let's, uh, let's give this thing a whirl. Slap these screws back in it real fast and see if this thing works. Like I said, that's normally why I pause the videos is because when I hit stuff that's going to take a while to diagnose, it takes a long time and probably get bored watching. Uh, sometimes the thing that causes the problem is so minute you may not be able to find it easy, uh, kind of like what I had to just deal with. And to find out, we got some burned out LEDs in that strip. But once they finally burned out completely with the power supply, where they weren't partially connected, uh, they started working again. I'm going to have to do some research to see if I can find this uh, three-wire multi-flash uh, LED strip that Lee Max used back when this was made. You could probably make your own or use something similar, like a 5 volt strip, but most of them are wider than what they use in these uh, animatronic toys. Or, excuse me, they're not toys. You can't call them toys. These animatronic houses or things. Alright, so 
Let's go back to its uh, natural. Let's get the tape off. Nothing. Please work. No work. All right. Well, I am going to pause now because I really got to do some more work on this. I mean, this video is already pushing two hours. So I'm going to take it apart, play with it some more, see what I can figure out. I'll let you know here in a few. Well, I don't feel so good. <laughs> All right. That was a pain. So there we go. I'm gonna turn off this light. Yeah, I haven't put any of this together. It's just together for me to test it. Still have the two lights that are burned out. Uh, believe it or not, it was. Let me turn this off. I'll watch as I turn it off. It'll reset. So it's off. And once this comes back down to the bottom and triggers that magnet, click. All right, so I've still got to reassemble this the correct way. Right now it's held together. I don't have the stars glued in or anything at the moment. Um, on this, In the motor up here, if you remember, there's a screw missing, and then the other screw was a short flat screw. Well, that short flat screw broke, and the head of the screw landed in that little distribution block on the side with the lights. So when I put a load on it, it was arcing and causing a short. So basically the screw head broke off, fell inside here, landed perfectly behind that little circuit board, and was causing my problem. Once I removed that and cleaned it up, put another new screw in there, uh, the one in the upper corner, the lower one was still good, the one I replaced. That was the problem. That was the problem after I fixed the, the, the shorted out pads on the rotor. <laughs> and found out that there's some burned out lights in this bottom one. It's sometimes the smallest, simplest things that'll screw everything up for you. Uh, a broken screw head landing on the circuit board that once this was pinched together enough to put tension, it would create a big enough short to uh, stop the whole unit. That was it. Uh, it's just something small and stupid. That's usually what happens on things. If you ever work on projects, it's always the small stuff that causes the biggest problems. As you saw, she's working. So now what I need to do is move the wheel or the arm so I can glue the stars in because I can't get to them when it's in the off or down position. Uh, glue this in and well, heat it up first and flatten it out. Glue it in. Uh, and then technically she is completely done. So, the easiest way to do this is to just tightening that screw. Make sure before I glue the, this in. Um, if it's a bad motor or a set of shorted lights, there's really no reason to get into the bottom unless you want to get to the main distribution board and the sound chip. Everything else is done through up here. The easiest way is to pop this screw. Uh, the screw cap, which is a light, so be careful. Unscrew the center screw, pull this off. If there's nothing wrong in this arm, you don't have to take out the one screw here, the two screws here, and the two screws here to get to the circuitry inside. But if your lights don't work, you might have broke a wire on the inside. As far as the back goes, uh, once you get that out, unscrew the top center screw, and then the four screws hidden behind these glue-in stars. Pull it out, check your distribution board, make sure it's not damaged, and then pull that motor out or replace that crack gear that's up in the gearbox. Reassemble before it's fully assembled. Test it. Make sure you didn't miss anything or have something super uncommon like the screw breaking. A metal screw in the plastic. You'd think the plastic would have broke. No, nope, screwed it. Um, and go from there. It's uh, actually not that terrible of a unit. The diagnosing of it's kind of hard. I can't imagine the reason why that would start shorting out when I touched it the first time, but it may have been it just wasn't rotating and putting pressure on that glue joint that had the the tear in the green coating causing the two copper pads to get too close to each other, which was easily fixed with my fingernail. Um, that's super rare. I can't imagine that happening again. If it did, it's probably buy a lottery ticket. And a screw head snapping off after it was all torqued together 
and falling into the distribution board in the arm up here. It's also not very common, so I am not sure exactly why this happened like that. I figured this would be a nice, short, easy video on how to take this apart. Not almost two hours of fighting with it to find that it's just the smallest things that can throw a hitch into your or uh, your project or a monkey wrench. So anyhow, I'm going to, I can get to this one. And so I'll have to move the arm, probably turn it on and then shut it off part way. So I'll probably, I'll just do that real quick. So just turn it on and then since the reset on this isn't computer controlled, the reset on this is magnetic controlled. You could even just put a magnet right here, a little dinky magnet to turn it off, um, or you can just unplug it. Uh, it's recommended you always let it turn itself off so it's in the right position, especially if you're going to store it. But because this is a magnetic reed switch that just breaks contact, it's not as big of a deal as the ones that use the uh, pressure switch that sends a signal to a chip on the board. So, but you can also just use a magnet to make the system think you turned it off. Well, and I'll show you a quick example of that. I have a, a neodymium magnet right here that is super, super strong. So I'm gonna plug it back in. I'll try to that oops drop the magnet oh so apparently my magnet's not working like it should there we go so right in the center of the star with this neodymium magnet off, click. I was going too low. I was going to the bottom of the star. So if you put it right in the middle of the big star, it turns right off. So if you're afraid of pulling the power on it, you can just get a magnet, something a little stronger than a refrigerator magnet, stick it right in the center of that star, trigger that magnetic switch, you're good to go. That allows you to get to the four holes if necessary, if you forgot to glue your stars on without disassembling this whole hub again. I will show it one last time, fully functional, in the dark, working like it's supposed to, once I flatten this out. Which to do that, I'm just going to heat it up and press it back into place. Probably be wearing gloves because it's going to be warm. And then uh, glue these stars back in with a dab of hot glue. And this will be glued in with a dab of hot glue. So that way it can be pulled apart in the future if this motor ever burns out again. Which, because they're little cheap hobby motors, it's probably going to happen in his lifetime if it doesn't get damaged from something else. So, shall I return in a little bit? Uh, sorry for the long process on this one, but this is what happens when you uh, have to diagnose things. So, be back here shortly. Okay, it's back. So we're good for now. It uh, functions like it's supposed to. I can't see where the arm is in relationship to other stuff, so I don't want to whack anything. I don't have it fully flat on its back. You can see all the lights are on, except for the two that are burned out. The volume works. It's rotating. It's quiet. So I'm going to turn the light on. There you go. And then turn it off. Should go back down to where the magnet resets it. There we go. And give you a. There's the center star pushed back in. You can see where the paint kind of chipped a little. That's about it. If you have some uh, light blue or uh, off blue crayon or paint, you could touch it up. Unfortunately, it stuck to the edge of the light when it came up. The light is flat. It does have a little discoloration on the edge right here, but it's not that noticeable unless you're actually looking for it. So it's unfortunately not a damage-free separation, but it's close as I can get. Uh, I had my heat pen set at 125 degrees Celsius to get this pliable enough to lift. 
uh, at 100 and 110, it wasn't hot enough to start separating the glue since they used um, a hard glue like Gorilla Glue and so on. But um, that's it. One of the uh, more painful ones to do because of chasing down that electrical bug that was caused by two flukes. A damaged piece of glue in there and that screw in here. So other than that, the um, only time you have to open the bottom is if you're not getting power up to the top or the speaker went out, something of that nature. There's a very small board down here that just sends everything up to the top. And then the read switch goes down to the bottom and disconnects the power at most likely a solid state relay uh, soldered to the board. So, and then when you do it, make sure you do it so this is level. Make sure you, when you put it back together that this is all one assembly and it's not kicked off at a angle or upside down or what have you when you put this back together if you take this car off. So, other than that, thanks for watching. Sorry for the long video. And... But you got to see how I sit here and do it when I'm fixing these or get them sent that have a problem that has to be diagnosed beyond something that's quick and easy. So, until the next one, thanks for watching.